Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Welcome to the Reflection this week for the 21st of August 2022 and I'm recording this on Friday morning. Those verses that I used as our call to worship are from Psalm 103, reassuring that whatever we have faced in the week that has passed, God was alongside us and God continues to be alongside us too. Let us pray. We come to God with our longings. Our Heavenly Father knows them all. We come to God with our burdens. Our Heavenly Father holds them all. We come to God alone or together. The Holy Spirit is here for us all. Amen. I mentioned the burdens that we all carry in many different ways. In the Gospel reading we're going to hear in a short while, we'll hear of how Jesus encounters one particular woman whose burdens are obvious to all who see her. But there's more lifting of burdens going on in that Gospel than it may appear at first sight. But first we're going to use a prayer. Let us pray. Jesus, you lift up all who are burdened, the hurting and broken, the fearful and desperate, the poor and oppressed, the warriors and the weary. May those whose life feels heavy, whose sense of worth has been eroded, whose joy has gone, know your liberating freedom and your unconditional love. Amen. Our Gospel is going to be presented by the Reverend Phil Summers and it's an encounter that takes place between Jesus and the woman who is worshipping in the synagogue and also the synagogue officials. Our Gospel reading. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman who had been disabled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, who was indignant because Jesus had cured on a Sabbath, he kept saying to the crowd, There are six days in which work ought to be done. Come on one of those days to be cured, not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him, saying, You hypocrites, does not each one of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead them to water? And ought not this woman, who is a daughter of Abraham, who has been bound by Satan these eighteen long years, should she not be set free from this on the Sabbath day? When he said this, his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing over the wonderful things he was doing. On the face of it, that Gospel reading is just one of many occasions when Jesus is in conflict with religious leaders about the keeping of the Sabbath, which religious tradition said should be free of all work. But if we look a little bit deeper, there's something else going on. Jesus notices that woman who is 
doubled over from whatever condition it was. And at the time of Jesus, that would have been associated in some way with sinfulness or with punishment. We think very differently these days with our medical and scientific knowledge. That woman clearly was a worshipper at that synagogue. She would have been well known in the local community. But how well known was she, for example, to those synagogue officials that Jesus encounters in the discussion that takes place? Jesus notices her. She doesn't come seeking Jesus. He notices her. And she is healed of whatever it was that was binding her. She is able to stand up straight and she worships God. And that's where the conflict begins between Jesus and the synagogue officials who say, look, this is the Sabbath day. You should have left it until an ordinary work day in order to do whatever you did to heal that woman. But Jesus points out something of their hypocrisy. Surely, he says, each of you has animals at home who you've untied from what holds them secure and led them to water that they may drink, even though it was the Sabbath day. Well, of course, they said. Of course, it's necessary. Jesus challenges them and said, Why then can't I untie this woman? He doesn't say it, but the implication is that she is being led to living water. She is being refreshed and revived by being unbound from whatever it was that was tying her. Jesus, time and time again, notices individuals who wider society may have regarded as being worthless or individuals on the fringe of what's really going on. In this passage, Jesus is doing just one healing in one synagogue on one day that happened to be the Sabbath. But the way Luke uses this passage, take a look in your Bibles, is that the next two accounts that Luke gives us are of Jesus talking about the mustard seed, a tiny thing from which grows a great tree, and also the yeast, the yeast that just a small amount can leaven a whole lump of dough. On the face of it, this is an almost insignificant event that happens in one particular community on one particular day. But Luke wants to emphasize that what Jesus does in small things is just part of the small thing from which the wider kingdom will grow. One of the images I've used this morning shows Jesus healing the woman. And in the background, there are the temple officials. The artist has used an image on those temple officials of Edward Munch's The Scream. They are astonished at what Jesus is doing. But maybe also those open mouths are mouths of worship. For in a way, they too are being liberated from what binds them the rigorous tradition that told them that work could not be done on the Sabbath, even if it was work for a good cause. Jesus has brought about the kingdom in small things, and we can go out into the world to continue to build the kingdom. Let us pray. O God, our Deliverer, at whose feet we are free to lay down our heavy burden, we bring before you those whose tasks are back-breaking, those whose daily labour damages their bodies, whose survival depends on repeating work that wounds them, who cannot dance free. We bring before you those who live uneasy in their bodies, those whose bodies restrict or pain them, those who are patronised by those who move with ease, who cannot dance free. We bring before you those whose spirits are crushed, who have forgotten how to look with pride, 
who have been long in bondage to oppression, who cannot dance free. Make them hear of joy and gladness, that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. Amen. That rather odd ending to that prayer, that the bones which you have broken may rejoice, is a direct quote from Psalm 51 verse 8, which refers back to how what God has broken, God will be able to restore. What God has cast down, God will raise up in the new values of the kingdom. New life from death, new beginnings from old, new value from the people that others have regarded as being worthless. For God loves each and every one of us and is alongside us in our journey. Our closing prayer. May the grace of God console our hearts. May the love of Christ surround and uphold us. May the breath of the Holy Spirit blow us into passionate fire. May God the Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer give us strength in the week that lies ahead. Amen. Thank you for being part of this reflection today. Bring before God whatever is oppressing you, whatever is restricting you in your pro proclamation of the kingdom. In the week that lies ahead, remember that the best of all, God is with us.